Let's call the meeting to order. Um, Tegan's going to take minutes until Rose arrives. Oh, uh, I can do that. Well, she's she's yeah. all set. Oh, you said, oh, okay. Okay. yeah, that was a question. Um, are there any additions or changes to the agenda? I have something to add. Um, the, uh, after the last meeting, um, uh, Nick called me and he wanted to s buy a generator stand for the generator and it had to be done right then, which I did, forgot to look at. I want to see where you're going to move it to. It's yes. Still there. Pardon me? It's still there. It's still there. <laughs> yeah, I didn't notice. Um, it, it cost two thousand two hundred dollars, and um, he had to. They had to special order it. So, I think I checked with one or two of you, and um, it occurred to me that we had enough left in the ARPA funds. Is that right, Gabrielle? To uh, cover that? Yeah. So um, I went ahead and authorized him to order it, which he did. What did you say? Twenty two hundred. Yeah. So, um, which is, on, I mean, I don't have the authority to do that, but I hope you guys will back me up. So I'd like to put that, uh, add that to the agenda. Um, in fact, we can do it right away unless somebody has another change. Um, would somebody please move? I would make a motion authorizing and to approve the purchase of the stands for the it was just one, right? It was just one, right here, because it's yeah. sort of in the floodplain. Uh, for the generator that, uh, that was installed, uh, and for the funds to be appropriated out of the balance of the ARPA funds. Do we have a second? I'll second. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you, folks. Can you read it? Like, can you say that a little more time? I'm not used to having to get all the right words for it. Uh, yes. We don't object if you change a word or two as long as it means the same thing. <laughs> Maybe it makes me sound smart, right? <laughs> <laughs> Category of paper. Um, uh, uh, motion to authorize in Winchester uh, to... To, uh, to authorize the Emergency Management Committee, I guess. Uh, yeah. We could just move to authorize the Emergency right. yeah, Management emergency Committee management to expend. Um, to uh, purchase, add the addition uh, of a generator stand to the scope of installation work. For the generator for the town hall. For the town hall generator. Okay. Is that enough, Tegan? You can, you so. can wordsmith it. So. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. The vote's unanimous. Uh, minutes of August 14th. Any comments? Do I have a second? Tegan, we are going too fast for you? Are you okay? I, I'm okay so far. Okay, <laughs> good. All in favor? Aye. Okay. Aye. Um, board orders are coming around. I think some of us have signed. Uh, Johnson curb cut. Tegan has the permit. Um, and what you're approving is what the, the original application with the additions Jordan put in at the last meeting. Is that That's already done, isn't it? Yeah, it's done. The curb cut's done? Well, then we better uh, approve it, I guess. She's got to fill in everything. She's very happy. Okay. So uh, I'll take a motion to authorize uh, issuance of the permit to Jenny Johnson for the curb cut. So moved. Second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, thank you. It's coming around and we can sign it. Uh, line of credit for the community bank. So this is, you've all seen this? And any discussion on this? Yeah, did you all read it? I mean, I assume all the. Uh, I have the one that Sandra signed. Um, oh, okay, she's not coming then. She's not coming then. And she also said that on that line um, where it gave authority for who could take the money out, she wrote her name, but she said she wouldn't be against it if you chose a select board member as a secondary person who could also take money out. Does everybody follow that? Yes. Would you like to have another select board person? I think that would make sense. Yeah. OK. 
Okay. Who would you like to have? Okay. Um, I have a preference for the vice chair. <laughs> Wait, it, sorry, this is to be a, what, a signatory? Yeah, that you would be one of the ones authorized to, to draw. Who's to draw. That, didn't, were there two, who's the signatory? I think I'm one of the signatories on the regular bank account. Yes, you and me and Sandra. The three of us. Oh, so maybe it would so make it sense. It might make sense oh, sure. Yeah. Have it be me just for that consistency. Okay. Absolutely. Can I give you this book then? <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> but it's a gift. <laughs> I, don't, I didn't sign that. I wasn't sure. Uh, well, we haven't voted yet. Yeah, you could call Would uh, somebody like to make a motion to sign this? I will tell you that I had a question, just in case you're interested. You'll notice it's three different documents, and I didn't know what the tax credit yeah, document was. Tax certificate. And what that is is we're saying that um, we will spend the money in a way that authorizes us to, to not have to pay taxes on it. There's a federal law that we can borrow so much for certain things. And this, this um, indicates that we promise not to use it to pay down another loan and a bunch of other things like that. So would somebody like to move signing of this document? What, the, what is the interest rate? 3.99 starting, I think, the day we draw it down and 3.99 for the year. And just for the amount that we actually use. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So we could ostensibly have, you know, several different pieces of it. And we have the whole Go. year both to draw and to pay it back. Right I there. believe we have three years to draw, as I recall. She had said one when she was here. Yeah, oh, we okay. We have to refinance after one if we oh, okay. didn't have a means to pay it back immediately. And you... You said the repayment term is one year? For payments to come due. And, I mean, we don't have to, I don't think we pay it, but we'll, it'll come due and it closes in a year. Okay. Um, so anything that, okay. my understanding is that we have a year to draw from it, and anything that we draw will then be closed out at the end of the year, and that'll start the repayment term. Okay. Other questions or comments? Can I have a motion that we sign the agreement? And I mean, don't forget, you have to sign in three places. Right. Oh, we're you adding Janie. Yet, oh. Uh, I, what is it? Oh, we're authorizing or signing? We're authorized, yes, we're entering into an, this agreement. With them, that we I can draw that them. we authorize the agreement with what's the bank? Uh, community bank. Community NA. bank for a one point seven million dollar line of credit. Okay. Um, and that you add. And you add Jamie Morby as a signatory. Well, it's not that she's a signatory. She is one of the two people authorized to go ahead and draw down the money. Right. Yes. Uh, We're all going to sign and it. Authorize the addition of Jamie Morby as, so was she an account holder? No, she's, I will read it to you. The following person or persons are authorized to request advances and authorized payments under the line of credit until the lender receives from the issuer a, 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 a different person. So it authorizes her to request advances and authorize payments. Addition of Jamie Marby uh, to take advances and payments from the account. Again. <laughs> Here. Say that again. Here. She got it. This no, I got it. Oh, okay. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. All right. I'm signing it and I'm sending it around. Remember, there's three different documents for you to sign. Did it get seconded? Oh, sorry. Thank you, Tegan. <laughs> Could I have a second? <laughs> Further discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thanks. Anybody from the public <laughs> want to? 
say anything? Okay. Um, now we've got the um, errors and omissions on the grand list. John, do you want to speak to it, or do you feel it's pretty self-explanatory? I think it's self-explanatory. Um, I guess for this question, Mr. Mitchell, you know, I learned that it came in around March. The uh, property owners last fall had taken down the building, and he was going to get rid of it. And he uh, went up and took a look, and sure enough, it was fine. So we reduced uh, the value of the property. Kept the septic, kept the well, got the house. Okay. And it looks like Sandra's already signed it. So I guess what we have to do is authorize Sandra to sign it. Is that right? <laughs> Sandra worked pretty fast. We corrected the, uh, she was able to send out a corporate tax call. And uh, yeah, if you guys want to sign it out. Looks like, we need, <laughs> <laughs> looks like no. we need to authorize. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. I'm sorry. Tegan. That's a different sorry. document. Tegan, I thought this was it. No, that's part of the loan. Oh, that was part of the... Um, that, that's oh, the that goes with the loan thing. All right. Okay, yes, I got it. I have it here. Thank you. Um, so I'll take... Is there any discussion, any questions about this? So I'll take a motion to... Off to um, sign the, have us all sign the errors and emissions certificate. So moved. Okay. Do I have a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Aye. Aye. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm sending that around for you to sign. Does your copy have these two signatures on it? I think so. Yes, it does. Do we need to sign more than one? I don't. That's just in the pile of things Barbara told me to bring with me today. Well, maybe we'd better just sign them both in case. I don't know why there's two. Is one a copy and one the original? That's a copy. Yeah, that's okay. what it is. Let's sign the original. Let's sign the original. So. Okay, 8-22-8-28. Sorry, Gabrielle. So this is the one to sign right here. Okay. Okay. Hiring committee has been hard at work. Yeah. So we've done two treasurer interviews. We are calling references. And quite a scheduled meeting for Thursday to call the hiring committee members to discuss the responses from the references. So much you have from the floor now to you. Yeah, a pot probably by the next meeting. Yeah. yeah. That's exciting. Okay. And, uh, Lewis is going to wander on the committee. Oh. He only wanted to, only your Sandra. They don't, they don't want to move on to the town administrator. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, yeah. Okay. So I emailed Cornelia Carey and asked what she'd be with Has she responded? No. <laughs> I told her it was the last, you know, they're moving, so it's her last chance to serve the town. I didn't know they're moving. They're leaving town. No, they're leaving the state. <laughs> in oh. May. Uh, sure. Oh. Probably Nick's going to resign too. Then. Okay. I said probably Nick will resign as emergency. No. Nick. Oh, Carrie. I'm sorry. Right. Okay. Um, so then. Uh, so are you going to interview um, in public, or do you want to exactly? I'd prefer to interview an executive session. I would assume they'd prefer it too. So we can schedule that for next time. We should put that down. I mean, there's still some things to figure out, like, um, you know, is this a salary position, which I think it is. I've been in touch with the about that. Um, you know, there's this we know what their salary expectations are. We haven't told them what the salary is, or what the salary. Um, and it, by well, statute, does it have to be? But no. Well, I didn't bring that forward with me, but does it have to be salary by statute? Yeah. Well, it's, it's, it depends on the definition of the. This would 
be an administ call it administrative, um, yeah. professional, there's a, there's a definition, and this fits into it. And I think there's only, I think there's a compensation rate uh, threshold. So if you're over, if it's an administrative position and it goes over a certain level of compensation, then it automatically has to be a salary. Um, but That's my know, memory. Other words, yeah. You can have hourly administrative employees that are under the threshold. But or you, not supervising. Or not supervising, right? Yeah. There's, mm -hmm. there's like four or five, and if you take any of the two that you're kind of kicked over. So my, my guess is relative to the compensation level, it's going it's to have to be. And unless we're hiring them as like a consultant. Mm -hmm. Interesting. We yeah, so still a few things to yeah, sort through. The other thing is, um, you know, the personnel manual is so out of date, yeah. and I don't want to give that to somebody because it just we don't even operate with that anymore. What is it? The personnel what? The personnel manual. So it used to be the last time it was updated was 2016. It used to be we asked an employee to read it and they sign the document saying. They is that different from the personnel policy? Yeah, no, that's what I mean. Personnel oh, policy. okay. Which is online. Yeah, it's on the website. But I guess we'll look around. Yeah. Well, uh, it's technically in effect, so we have to follow it. Right, it seems like it would be worth still having them read it, but have the knowledge that it's on our to do list for this fall to. Updated. Tegan's going to help us with that. So, all right. Um, do you want to walk us through these? Maybe we could take the road road foreman next. The way you've written these job descriptions, um, the road the town administrator would be the road commissioner, and we would have a road foreman. Right. The town, the town administrator. So Donna's handed out three documents. Do we have copies for Scott if he wants to look at them? Oh, Donna, did you give put put them in front of? Me? So the first two, the town of Callis road form and job description, town of Callis town administrator, Donna teased apart. Um, our former road commissioner uh, list of responsibilities and put some with the town administrator and some with the foreman. So that's what you're looking at. Is that fair, Donna? Right. And then, and then Anne found this um, town of Lockton road foreman position, and she liked the way it started out, and then she found out that it Well, I like the way they list the major duties. I, I mean, everything else about yours was I mean, everything was great, and most of the major duties are in yours, but I liked the way it starts out by saying, you're gonna, every day you're gonna plan and supervise what's going on. And by the way, I had a conversation with the union guy, Larry, uh -huh. to find out whether this foreman under this job description would be a union member or not. I guess maybe you guys understood that, but I didn't. He says, yes, he can be a union member, even though he or she is supervising as long as they're a working member, okay. which would be the idea. Yeah, and we would just, we would need to enter into a side yeah. agreement on the rate of pay and everything else would large and maybe some other responsibilities relative. Actually, there's language in, in like the disciplinary, et cetera, et cetera, um, that accommodates somebody in a managerial role um, that's loose enough that yeah, so it would largely just be a side agreement relative to their, their compensation right. rate um, until the next union contract negotiation and then it would likely get absorbed. But then I think it's important for the town to consider that, that that then becomes like a permanent part of the contract. So if we ever wanted to walk back that arrangement uh, or like that relationship, that it, it would get harder for us to do that because um, it, it would be a part of the so, mm -hmm. um, I guess we would have three years to decide whether or not we 
<laughs> would you want to leave somebody in that hole? Um, or if that was, that was a an organizational structure that was working for the town. Yeah. I read in the minutes from last time that, that the road crew is one short. Mm -hmm. So they're sure no work for me. It, so there's five of them and they're one short? So there are three full-time employees and then we have two part-time employees okay. and one part-time employee that we brought on specifically because of the flooding. That's basically... We just temporary temporary, temporary full-time? Temporary, no, temporary. Part-time. Temporary. And how long are we, have we engaged him for? The, the Bruce? Yeah. Um, he's been... No, I mean, when's he finished? Is there a time when, he, when we're stopping? I'm assuming fairly soon. Yeah, I would think so. Okay. Because yeah. he's, he's FEMA. He's doing FEMA stuff, right? Yes. So he's, well, he's helping with all the things, but he was brought on to help us get through the things. Yes. Okay. So I take it that the words working supervisor should be in this. I, I liked that yeah. because that's a working supervisor. Plan, supervise, and coordinate. This is a working foreman. Yeah. Okay. So, if I question, because it read very much like a managerial position, so is the expectation they're also going to be in the field working? So Do you have the Moncton one in front of you? I don't have the Moncton one. Oh. Right. No, I didn't take that one. Either. Um, Gabrielle and I can share mine. So you can see they're, they're essentially the same, but it's a little bit clearer, I think, that this is a supervisor but also a worker. Okay, well, because of, yeah, the one that I had read it felt Right. It's very much working on the, the paperwork things because I think we've had the discussion. It's going to be a challenge to find. You have somebody who's really good at working in the field. They're not going to be as inclined to want to sit behind a desk and do that stuff and vice versa. So, so I actually haven't read through the town of Moncton, but do you want me to try to kind of meld these two together? Well, let's see what other. I do, but I, yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm just one of five. Let's see what. Um, and we uh, we need to really move on these pretty quickly, I think. Yeah. So, yeah, well, let's I think, see. I think melding them together, and to Anne's point, the way I sort of see it is that the working foreman will really primarily be a working foreman and making the day-to-day -day decisions, but less, and then the town administrator would be more of the grants administrator, more of the paperwork desk stuff. So the foreman would have that sort of organized and record keeping for the administrator, but the administrator would be doing more of the And in the Moncton work. one, they report to, the foreman reports to the select board, and in the Callas one, the foreman reports to the town administrator. What, what, which one would you like? Oh, town administrator, because yeah. that, they'll be the road commissioner. Yeah. So uh, that's how we would do it eventually. Um, I also like that this person doesn't necessarily have to be um, the hardcore supervisor. And um, mm -hmm. it says things like, when unsure how to handle a complaint, you know, well, kick it upstairs. It's, right. You don't have to be the one where the buck stops. And uh, I'm looking at the Moncton one. Um, I'm looking at the second bullet, which this is this is in responding to um, responding to complaints or you know comments from the public. But then it also says, um, yeah, and then again, supervise the highway personnel. This is the fourth bullet. Um, bring unusual personnel problems to the attention of the select board. Actually, I would say the um, the administrator, the, well, the, the, yeah, the road commissioner. 
say unusual personnel problems? Is that yeah, what it says? It's a little funny wording. Uh, Which one is that? The unusual personnel problems. Definition section. You could just say personnel problems, yeah. And then again, that the second last bullet, you know, recognize and communicate to supervisor of any problems, basically. So it, it really, this person isn't, you know, the one who has to discipline employees, but has to recognize that there's a problem and bring it to the road commissioner. Any more discussion on this? So this is a this is a highway budget item, road foreman. Where and where, well, what kind of room in the highway budget do we have to hire a road foreman? Well, we have uh, a budget for uh, we've we've budgeted for five employees. One of whom I think was supposed to be the road commissioner, but I noticed there's no money for a road commissioner. I guess it was envisioned that the director of public works was going to be the road commissioner. Mm -hmm. So we have 80,000 for that. And then um, highway wages, 210,000 divided by five approximately. So. Toby, we're talking about the road foreman job. How did I know that? <laughs> <laughs> just in time. Uh, the, I guess the road, road foreman job description, then we already bring this up, it mentions road commissioner, but that's because the, you're talking about the, the one that's the callus. Yeah, that's just, I, since I took the road commission. Oh, I see. Yeah. 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 Y
hourly rates were in there, but but I think to your point that that's gonna with the increase in the pay that we have with the way that we that's already we may not have yeah that's gonna three of those individuals were bumped up two three two and a half dollars an hour so three people getting bumped up two and a half dollars an hour is gonna be most of your way to another other employee so that, that, a lot of that budget's gonna get gobbled up quickly and. Yeah. Just relative to the contract negotiation, so I'll have to look pretty closely, I guess, at that um, when we start budgeting for 2025. Great. Mm -hmm. Make sure that we make that adjustment. But, but for this year, we're hiring both the foreman position and the town administrator position. Soon, we hope. Well, soon, but that's what, three quarters of the way through the year, halfway through the year? Well, July. Now, when, oh, I guess Remember, it July. started in July. Right, so <laughs> almost halfway through the year. Probably, yeah. I mean, by the time. By the time they're hired. Yeah. yeah. So that gives us a little wig of a room for all the months we haven't been yeah. paying that yeah. salary. Let's hope. Well, you're looking at FY24, which is, it starts on July 1st. So if you hire somebody down before July 1st, it's in FY23. No, we're in FY24. Yeah, we're now in FY24. Because it started July 1, 23. Yeah. Yeah. Now, the town administrator job description, I incorporated the changes that we talked about in the last meeting. Um, well, should we just, I guess we're, we're going to see another draft of this at the next meeting then, of the yeah, foreman. The form, yeah. yeah, okay. So town administrator, yeah, let's turn to that. I wondered if we shouldn't add in there uh, develops capital plan and it helps develop, no, develops capital plan and gen annual budget. That would be the road commissioner, right? Isn't there. that what the road commissioner does? I thought that was in there. Oh, is it? I missed it then. Uh, yeah, it says like mas that. master planning documents. Ah, okay. Long range planning documents or capital plans. So that's one of them. And then also the annual budget. That's number nine. nine. Nine has the and budget. annual budget. Okay, thank you. So number eight, you want to add pairs and tracks those regularly reports on. On the on the uh, oh. long range planning documents. Yeah. Mm -hmm. those, those are like to be kind of working documents that or living documents that get. Throughout the, throughout the year. Mm -hmm. Okay. It'd be nice if they were prepared to also kind of speak, speak to it regularly to the select board. Can you say that again, Jordan? Uh, Under number eight, right? Uh, prepares and reports on long range planning documents for capital plans as directed by the select board. Wouldn't it be more appropriate for the treasurer to, to be the one to report on some of that stuff? I Capital think the plans. Job description we have, we refer to the treasurer and the town administrator working together on some of these budgeting. Right. Yeah. Well, it does say in number nine, with the treasurer prepares. Right, because because it really has to be jointly. Budgetary aspects, and then also knowing the trucks. Mm -hmm. and, yeah, I guess my my view on that would be that that individual is the owner of kind of those of those working documents um, and the dialogue about them with the select board, and then the treasurer is the one who's kind of facilitating the budget the budgeting uh, element of it, and the administrator is the one who's bringing that information to, to the select board. Mm -hmm. 
Hmm. Well, I would envision that this town administrator would also come to the select board a lot yeah, yeah. and be working with us. So they'd, they'd work together. In fact, the town administrator is supervising the treasurer. Isn't that right? Yes, in the flow chart. So that isn't in here. That this person supervises, oh, supervises, no, town properties and buildings. So there probably should be something about su All town employees is in two. Is it in two? Okay, you guys are doing better at this than I am. I don't know that we want the town administrator, we want the town administrator supervised by, or the treasurer supervised by the town administrator. Uh, well, that was what was in Donna's flow chart, wasn't it, Donna? Yeah, so there's something we took out of this list. We took out committees, because... Right, we took, yeah. This does not mention the treasurer. It doesn't. Oh, I have it. Right, I, I see them working closely with the treasurer. Well, I'll tell you something I've been thinking about. Oh, oh. Here's what we did last time. I had treasurer, and we changed it to select board. Uh, was, which which number are you talking about, Don? Number three. So it was acts as the select board's agent in supervision of employees, including treasurer. And we inserted town employees. And we took out treasurer and noted that the treasurer was going to report the select board. I've been kind of thinking about if we hire a treasurer who is more of a bookkeeper type that and and Sandra says that the job in many weeks can be done in 20 hours and other weeks, it's more than that. Oh, couldn't this treasurer report to the town administrator and in the hours when, in the weeks when she, he or she doesn't have 20 hours, kind of assist the town administrator in other ways, if it's gonna be a full-time job? And you also have to keep in mind that some of the things that T and Marlon are doing the really the treasurer like, like, Yeah, I mean, Say that, oh, Okay. Like what? Well, there were things that, that went to TV and Barbara when Sandra left and Wendy came on. Mm -hmm. And now Sandra's trying to keep to 20 hours a week. So, for example, TV, you need the payroll, right? You got to be touch the payroll. I do the initial part of the payroll. So, when it comes in, I put it off in a spreadsheet with, um, and pass it on to Wendy, and she does all of this. <laughs> So would you envision that the treasurer would take over that part of it? I'm happy to keep doing it. It does seem more appropriate for a treasurer to be doing it. Yeah. I don't mind doing it. Yeah. And who's processing the tax checks? Barbara isn't doing most of the processing of the tax checks. But that's appropriate. She's, a, she's assistant treasurer. Yes. I wonder if... Uh, is there anything else like that that we passed on to Tegan that should go back to the treasurer? I think we have to ask Sandra. Yeah, it would have happened in Jeremy's time more than in my time. So, okay. Um, I have talked to Worcester uh, over there, and they, because they just split up their clerk and treasurer duties, they're sort of hashing this out too. So I'd be happy to talk to them a little bit about what they have found in their efforts to clarify roles. Tegan. Um, because the other aspect is that Sandra's only there until the last couple weeks. She was only there maybe once a week. I didn't see her very often. And now she's in a couple times a week, and we do interface more. But for a while, I'm sure Barbara and I were probably doing things she was supposed to do, and I, I don't know what those are because I've never known any other way to do it. Okay, so it sounds like there's a little more fine tuning to be done here then to make yeah, sure. Get all treasure jobs. I'm there. Are we only first separated out. I'm assuming there are a few kicking around in various files. Various. 
In fact, along those lines, I was wondering about number 11, drafts the town meeting warning. Isn't that something the town clerk does? No. Oh, it's not? No. How about that? Okay. Thank you. And, what, and drafts the town meeting warning, is that like the agenda? What What is the warning? Is the, the warning what you vote on? Okay. Well, some things are kind of similar to the other things get added. Okay. It's usually okay. select for a job from what yeah, I was. Well, they find it. They find it. Okay. Okay. All right, where are we with this? Sounds like Tegan's going to do a little thinking about it. Well, and yeah, and, or could we uh, leave it at, at kind of the way that it's stated about managing personnel? I mean, I guess worst case scenario, we end up peeling out like the actual reporting structure to the select board when we clarify the role when we hire somebody. That's a good without, idea. Without, we, yeah. without getting into the treasurer back and forth, because I can see how that, I can see in the future, depending on how everything kind of shakes out, it, it could be nice to have some autonomy between those two, which isn't to say that the administrator couldn't facilitate the hiring or seeking of a treasurer in the future or something mm -hmm. like that. but. It, at the time that the hiring is being done, that's still being done by the select board, and then the reporting is then still at the select board level, but they're still facilitating, okay. facilitating the hiring process. Yeah, I guess my instinct just says it's cleaner to have one person be the supervisor of personnel, the town personnel, but we don't have to decide that right now. Yeah. Yeah, we. I hope we're going to have to decide it pretty soon. Now, um, and, and there is the idea of the one municipal assistant who would support the town for. Um, well, that's that's also. You're thinking of the bookkeeper. I was thinking if we wound up with a treasurer who was more of a bookkeeper, he or she would have some time, yeah. many weeks of the year, to assist the town administrator, in which case I'd like the town administrator to be supervising if we decided that was appropriate. Mm -hmm. Shall we ask Donna to bring another draft again next week? I think we'd better try to close it next week, though. The town administrator. Both. Yeah, yeah, I'll, I'll, Are we meeting next week? I'm sorry, next <laughs> meeting. Okay. No, we're okay. not meeting next week. Hey, you never know. It's <laughs> um, Okay, progress. Thank you, Donna. Um, next up is Toby. Toby made a recommendation on roadside mowing. Did you all get that? Roadside mowing, both uh, rental for the short term and potentially buying some for the long term, buying one. So um, Pete's equipment does have a, a mower available for three weeks in October. Um, the limit is 40 hours a week of actual machine time. So essentially five days a week we can be mowing the other side. <coughs> Catch up with what we missed. Um, do they supply the operator too? Or do no. we? Okay. We, we would have to go pick up the machine unless we pay to have to deliver it in. So, and do you need you, a CDL to do the mower? And it would be. But, but everybody on the crew has a CDL, so I think the crew members can be driving. So, help us out with the budget. You're saying it would be three weeks, be over $10,000, yep. which is um, way so beyond. Also, so, we also have to buy two sets of blades, and if you only go through one, we can return one set. They're about $400 a piece, so the total. Up front is 11,288 um, for three weeks. That includes the blades? That includes the blades. Is it, and it's not possible to get the the existing one repaired for $4,000? Okay. Where did I see that? So with the $4,000, that's just when you can see that it's an incredibly rough machine. It's, the cover is bolted. 
you would have to basically like pry off the cover to see what's happening on the other side. That price would go up. Four thousand is what I can say. Mm -hmm. It's going to be a very, very. It was more than one. And the parts are probably not available if you find parts in the news. I mean, it's that old. It's that old. It was old when it was purchased by. <laughs> Can we sell it? <laughs> My understanding is that that thing was like a stopgap uh, to, to get us through to making a decision and then it lingered uh, on to beyond exhaustion um, hmm. and is and it's there. Cool to get parts. It's, 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 it's done. Um, there may be some value if somebody wants to buy it for parts for their old tractor or something like that. I don't know. We could, we could certainly sell it. I don't know what it's worth. I have no idea. For parts. Yeah. yeah. So where are we going to get the money? It's not in the budget. Well, there is a $5,000 line item for mine. So we're, essentially we're talking about another $6,000 that would have to show up somewhere. And, uh, Yikes. So the... The question is, line items are great, but the bottom line is, at the end of the year, are you going to buy the divorce? Because all the other line items are going to be higher or lower, depending on how you do it. And there's no position on the line. Well, we're ascertaining. There's 6,000 somewhere in the line. And it's going to be really difficult this year because of all of the things that We've also ascertained that we're going to go over the highway wages budget, too. Oh, yeah, of course. So. Yikes. Yeah. I mean, I think that it's literally the same three weeks that were available back in June, but we need to know in the fall. It's, I tried to reach out to Doug Grout, and it didn't see it anymore, but it has a mower. Um, so I didn't know if that was something that we could, but I haven't heard back. So, I didn't see it done. And what happens if we don't do it? If we just leave it and deal with it next spring? It creates challenges with plowing. Um, yeah, I think it's going to get hard to see obstacles, that sort of mm -hmm. thing. Like it, it, it becomes a safety issue for sure. Yeah, but it's going to be rough already. Well, it, it, it's, it's already a safety issue. I mean, yeah. there are ditches that are growing up with full grass, so you think that it's just a shoulder. If yeah. you pull off to get out of the way, yeah. you get into the ditch. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's currently a safety issue. So I have a question about the surplus. Doesn't the town really have a surplus? I think we've already spent it. <laughs> yeah, we did. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So uh, when, when Sandra last spoke about the surplus that she was very specific not to call a surplus, uh, in, in the roads budget, it was relative to tracking like, the pluses and the minus that Toby was mentioning. And uh, I think it's going to be hard to kind of track what, what the expenses are. And who will be on the hook for maybe some of the hour, over, hourly overages and the wages overages. But I guess that's going to probably going to even out a little bit. And then theoretically, all the expenses that are occurring relative to the extra scope of work for overtime and rehabilitation are, are going to be covered by SEMA. So, if everything shakes out pretty well, it should well, we, be that be so, so essentially, we'll, if the reimbursement works according to plan and we get all of that we are due, 87% of that will be paid by FEMA. And the difference is, so that covers the, the salary budget for the employees, but the other yeah. portion that we're getting is the machine time that we never calculate into the cost of the annual budget. So all of the machine hours that we would bill to FEMA will actually cover all of overages and other things. It's not, unfortunately, there's no way to know right now right. what that number's going to be. Right. Um, and we're still going to pay 15% of what is going to be almost $2 million. It's 12.5 because the state adds 12.5% So the state and FEMA pay 87.5% of the bill work to destroy the roads. Even minus the, the fact that the, the zoning regs were not adjusted for the full state reimbursement? The zoning regulations for, there was um, 
a reimbursement from the state that we missed, be, and that's why they're doing the rewrite, the rewrite of the rewrite. So I'm not sure that this, we would be up for 12.5%, what? The river right? Yeah. That's, that's right. So, so the 12.5 is already locked in. It's the 17% that we didn't get because we hadn't approved the river corridor. So we could okay. get up to 17% if we had Okay, so 12 is. 12.5 is, so it's called EREF. Yep. And we're already at 12.5. It could be at 17 if we had done the zone. Got it. Got it. So we're guaranteed 87.5 of whatever the, the, the total expenditure is. So if it's a million dollars, the town's on the hook for 12, I mean, uh, 125,000. Do the math. <laughs> I'm not doing math in my head. <laughs> so the bottom line, it's really hard to predict whether we, even if we're over nine items in the highway budget right now, I can't tell you it's going to be Yeah. Yeah. But it's going to be, we might have a huge surplus because of the FEMA works out. And there's no way to know that yeah. until we do all the calculations, unfortunately. Um, and I don't believe we need to authorize this, right? The um, road no, commissioner so manages well, I mean, her own budget. <laughs> just, just give me a nod to sign the contract. I have to reserve it for our cover. I guess that's all the stuff that you guys need to do. I think that's the totally appropriate thing to do. If there's a machine available to do the work and there's operator available to do the work, then the work should be, you know, should be done. We should try to get done. Um, it's, it's absolutely a safety issue. I think every day you drive by and see yeah. people starting to catch up on road mowing. Uh, <coughs> um, one, did anybody at any point ask, um, weren't, wasn't VTrans lending out stuff for yeah. towns? They wouldn't lend out a mower. <coughs> that actually seems like something they could and would lend out. I don't know how much of the mowing they're doing. They just. Uh, I'm not sure. They, they don't do roadside mowing. They do interstate mowing. That's different equipment. Okay. It's not. It's not the mower. Yeah. They don't have the mower that we would need. And even the interstate mowing in the beginning of 2022, they awarded 12 contracts at the tune of eight million dollars a pop for the 12, 12 districts, the maintenance districts, and that includes the. Uh, that includes the interstates too. So I think the state has largely made the decision that they are going to be hiring out the roadside home, uh, mm -hmm. specifically. I don't. I imagine that goes down to the state highways as well uh, a little bit, where mm -hmm. maybe that just falls exclusively on the towns. But I wouldn't be surprised if a lot of that equipment has been liquidated now that those contracts are in place. All right. Well, um, from the nodding heads, I'd say you've got the nod. Does anybody object to that? I think it's a good idea. <laughs> you know, we are going to have to go and like strategize the most high need areas because 120 hours isn't going to. We'll have to do the best we can. Well, yeah, we'll do the, so we'll the, the most serious. The highest needs and get yeah. that out and make sure we keep it focused. Okay, Toby also gave us two quotes for um, buying our own mowing machines. Um, so, uh, if, if you want to deal with that now, we can. I mean, essentially, we solve the problem. We have time to, right. to deal with this in the future because essentially we go to town meeting and ask the voters' right. permission, or you can do it yourselves if you want to do a five year lease. I had sort of put together just a quick look at what the capital plan should be. It, um, it hadn't been done in the last couple of years, so um, and I'm still sort of um, verifying a couple of things. Um, last year's town budget for the capital <coughs> line items had things in it that were already paid off, and so essentially we've raised money for things we don't need to make <coughs> in FY24. Um, and it, one of those is because the Western Star took so long to get here that it actually ended up in the next year. Sorry, the what, what took so long? The Western Star, the, the new truck. The truck. Yeah, that came got like delayed so long that it became... Uh, oh, we got to see the accident. So um, the way we buy equipment, 
particularly the town of trucks, is we buy them with a seven year extended warranty. And so we've had an experience in the past where we had a seven year warranty and we missed the date. And within two weeks of the ex expiration of the um, warranty, the engine blew up and it cost us $15,000. So we really need to stay on top of the seven year itch on the trucks. And there's actually two of them that are coming out in the next two years that need to be replaced. And so we should, you know, again, look at the big picture because essentially right now, for the past four or five years, we've been putting roughly 100000 into the capital one that every year. It might double depending on if we buy the data. So those are things that we might have a little longer look at. Yeah. yeah. And, and I, so I've been trying to work on this spreadsheet whenever I can find time. And one of the things that I think would be important to kind of look at in that end is <clears throat> so you look at it from the numbers of, of proposing what what the rental costs are uh, for a mower and what the purchase costs are and then you have kind of the maintenance that has to be rolled into that and you have the operator etc cetera, etc cetera. and the mower is a very specific piece of equipment that is going to have a cost mm -hmm. that if you look at the math another way you could look at what the hourly rate of ownership is what's our hourly rate of running a tractor that's two hundred thousand dollars or one hundred eighty or even one hundred sixty thousand dollars but we're using it for sixty hours relative to an excavator which could be two hundred and fifty thousand mm -hmm. three hundred thousand dollars but we're using it mm -hmm. for a thousand hours a year and so what makes what makes sense for the town Good. What is that wine? Does anybody know? Is that creating a feedback loop? I thought it was like a hearing aid. Exactly. Let me know if it's part of what it does. Yeah. Yeah. What about like, um, Owning it cooperatively with Woodbury and Worcester or something like that. Um, so the problem with renting a piece of equipment every spring and fall is you compete with all the other towns that are doing the exact same thing. And I'm not sure how you can be sure that we were going to get the machine for the period of time that we had it every year. Yeah, and I, I think if it's a, with one of the breakdowns that Toby's brought to us earlier in the year, it's pretty clear that if the town decides that the strategy is either between renting and owning, owning makes sense, you know, by, by the numbers relative to when we need to do things and how much it's going to cost, you know, we might want to scratch our heads about it a little bit more uh, to make sure that we, we include the maintenance costs in that. But I think the real decision, the real decision, the long term decision is whether or not it's between purchasing a specialized piece of equipment or hiring or, or contracting that work. Um, and, and then in that perspective, it comes down to, because then you're rolling in like the, the opportunity cost of having an individual uh, mm -hmm. who could otherwise be better utilized for those hours grading roads that, that need to be graded. And so we... Yeah, so that didn't do it. I don't know if the red, I'm finding it very distracting. Yeah. No, I need to. It's right here. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Well, it sounds like what? a fire alarm. Um, yeah. Well, I guess this. Thank you, Ann. I didn't turn down all the wine. I don't know it's not. I don't know it's not. <laughs> Should we be evacuating the building? I don't know if you have like a carbon thing upstairs or if there's a big on one in there somewhere that I don't know where it is. But I think to Toby's point, we have some time to figure that out. And I think we've punched in those. So, so just a, a quick look at whatever. Capital plan looks like. <laughs> Thank you. The other the question I had was are there neighboring towns who also um, contract out for mowing and would go in on this with us? Um, that's what I yeah, that's what I was asking. Yeah. Woodbury and Western. I haven't done research yet. I know we've talked about it and I'm not sure what other towns do. I think we do some research on that. Um, 
I have asked VTrans to give you some names of contractors that do that. Oh, sure. yeah, yeah. I've not gotten any answers from them yet. I, just I have a list yeah. of uh, a yeah. handful of contractors, and I've spoken about one of them, but I can't have any meaningful conversation without so they can either bill you by the miles or bill you by the hour. Yeah. Um, and and they're kind of feeling it out too. Uh, well, essentially, we have 73 miles times two would be 146 miles an hour. Yeah, that's the that's the quick way to, to estimate it. And uh, the follow-up questions end up getting into uh, you know how many of those have like how many of those miles have guardrails, how many of them have uh, just grass rel relative to brush, um, and you know what style of work you want, what's the extent of the work, and you know. I, one of the smaller elephants in the room is going to be, you know, what, what's the aesthetic and appetite that the town wants for a contractor to come in and do things the way that we want them to do it, uh, when we want them to do it relative to invasive species, whether or not we want them to use full saws or whether they, we want them to use uh, a mower, a flail mower for doing brush work. Um, there was a squealing sound. Um, so it's, I think it's a it's a conversation worth spending a decent amount of time on, but there's a lot of information. I don't know. I started to kind of quantify the mileage relative to. Uh, it ended. Did you find it was the phone? phone? I'm calling my husband to see if he knows. It stopped. 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 Mm -hmm. oh. Is it the it's microphone not. that John planted in here before? <laughs> <laughs> John. <laughs> Guess that's all you gotta do. Yeah. <laughs> 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 oh, <he's> <laughs> <laughs> um, Jordan, did you finish? Oh, yeah, you were not quite. I mean, I'm not prepared to speak to any of those. Right. You know what, what those are. It'd be nice to know what, what the actual number of hours that we have been spending um, on it on an annual basis when we're using Well, and that's it. difficult because the machine keeps breaking down. So yeah. Really <laughs> <hard to quantify. laughs> yeah. What's the window that we have to, because everybody wants it at the same time, I understand. Is, is it even practical well, to think about the sharing? The basis go to seed that you want to cut in the spring. And then in the fall, I don't know that there's a time frame that is. Ah. Is, is, okay. It's but a, uh, it's the spring cut that I think is very determinant of the spread of invasives. And I'm thinking about the idea of sharing with another town. Are, are both towns going to want them at exactly the same time, or is there enough of a window that we could share? Um, again, it depends. So if you take it in April and it rains three days uh, and, yeah. and you're not getting very you know, wonderfully mowing, again, there's, there are defaults in whatever you do. And if you hire a contractor and they have to go somewhere else and they didn't finish because of weather, the same thing's going to happen. And the only, <clears throat> the only sort of control you have is if you own a machine and you can mow again when the weather changes and you have a bit availability to do it. Right. And, and, and can you get a machine that does double duty? Not really. It's either a mower or it isn't. It's, yep, it's either a mower hmm. or it isn't. It's just, unfortunately, there's not much else you can do. I was wondering if that's what this Kubota quote was about, because I didn't see that it was a mower. Well, if you look in the very fine print on the right-hand side in that little box, you'll see a 97000 yeah, right. dollars <laughs> Okay. It goes from a $100,000 tractor to a $200,000 tractor. Right. It says $97,000 for, for a mower. Uh-huh. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. I see. Yeah. The, <laughs> 97000 Exactly. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Both the Kubota and the New Holland John Deere quotes also came with the arm that goes up and you take down all the high limbs. Right, it's a flail mower, so yeah, you could do it to do brush. Just okay. So, so we can have a conversation. I mean, if Jordan wants to try and get a machine that can get to a point where we can say, well, yeah, this is what guys are bidding on, so they all Right, and meanwhile, we'll be building the capital budget for um, presentation at town meeting. Right. But how far ahead do you have, if we decide to rent again, would you 
have to get, do it to be sure you got into that little window. I know this is my first call to them, and I got into October. So, uh, and again, it all depends. So they have five machines at Pete's. I don't know if anybody else like up in Burlington runs them as well. So there may be more vendors that have more availability. Well, would it be worth signing up right now for next spring, and with the option to cancel? Uh, Just in I'll, case we I'll, get stuck I'll again. Find out what their, what their lead time is. Yeah. Because um, even if we do vote at town meeting to buy a mower, will we have it ready to go next spring? Uh, it's hard probably, to say. Probably the earliest would be fall. Yeah. Be best case scenario. So we do need to get well, on. I, maybe I don't know. There's they, they they occasionally come up like somebody doesn't want like I just saw one down in. Middlebury, which is in New Holland, and it's a very lightly used tractor with a brand new uh, boom mower that was added to it. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know what the price is, but I'm, I'm guessing it's in the ballpark. Um, and, it, and it looks like that just came came on, so that was probably a contract that somebody decided not to buy or something like that. So something like that could happen. Um, well, and again, so it, so if we if we uh, come to a decision that we're going to purchase some way or shape or form and, and if something comes up, we want to have the flexibility of not, not missing it. Uh, you know, if there's a used piece of equipment that saves us $30,000 mm -hmm. in the purchase, then we should come up with an idea that that's where we're headed and... Well, then we'd take a short-term loan. Yeah. To, and, yeah. Um, uh, you know, you as a select board can do a lease purchase up to five years on any piece of equipment without anybody in town Right. Needing to vote on it, so, um, so again, I don't, I haven't seen that price, but it, you know, we should look at it and see if it's a reasonable okay. uh, option. But we need to be aware. Of it. If it comes up, we should move on. All right. Any more on this one? Okay. So you have what you need to rent it. Yeah. Oh, right. You'll have what you need to spring. rent it. Yeah, it'd be good just to have it as insurance if that's um, yeah. something we can do. Okay, the um, office staff asks that we go from weekly payroll to bi-weekly payroll because um, that'll save them a lot of time. And it'll save us a lot of money that we pay NIMRIC to do that every week. That you pay in what? We pay NIMRIC to help us with payroll every week. Oh, okay. It's a chunk of time. Yeah. Everybody okay with that? Now that the union negotiation is over, we can do it, which we couldn't before. Yeah. Okay? Would, fine with that. I didn't. Yeah, that's how it yeah, yeah. is. Do we need a vote on that? Do you, I, I, maybe we do. Why don't we just do it? <laughs> so, would somebody like to move that we go to bi weekly uh, payroll? I'll make a motion to uh, go to uh, bi weekly payroll uh, for yeah. off beginning. The next appropriate payroll cycle. <coughs> um, that's it. Do we have a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, it's so unanimous. We need to be bi in our current personnel policy, if I remember correctly. It is. That was yeah. the last one. <laughs> 2016, we updated it to yeah. Okay. Uh, I think it, it was just a road crew that was used to the weekly, so yeah. Yeah, it just got. Yeah. I had to do a lot of arm twisting to get the road hurry code of arms. Um okay, East Callis General Store liquor license application. Is that clear for do, you guys don't have the agenda in front of you, do you? So this is about, um, we authorize Tegan to, it, the, the way it works is the state um, needs us to approve um, either authorizing a, a one-time liquor license, like for a wedding or something, um, or authorizing one, in this case, to the East Callis General Store, and every year we have to reauthorize. So at a, at a meeting a few months ago, we authorized Tegan to go ahead and do the approval without coming to us for all the, it was unclear whether we meant to do all those or whether we just meant the one-time licenses because it was in the context of somebody applying for um, a liquor license for a wedding that was being held at Memorial Hall. Yep. So the question, am I being clear? So the question is, do we want to authorize Tegan to just go ahead and approve 
all of them, some of them? Do we want to limit what she can approve? They, they usually come up once a year in March, and most towns just, it's a two minute select board. Yes, we. Oh, we already did this. We, we did it for this year, but this is now for the East Callis General Store, which has applied for the first time. This is not a reauthorization. Right. It seems to me that we should authorize Tegan to do any one-time event license or and any renewal of existing ongoing licenses, but that the select board should vote on new Ongoing. ongoing licenses. Rose, could you consider that a motion? <laughs> I, I already put Jamie's name. <laughs> <laughs> I'll second that. Okay. Do you need any of that repeated, Rose? I think I know that. Okay, we have a motion mm -hmm. and it's seconded. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. So Thank then you. under that, do we need to vote on the East Callis license? Oh, I guess we, we do. Have it's, that a new, it's a new one. Because it is It a is a new one. OK. And this is presumably to sell beer and wine? It is to sell beer and wine, yeah. Are they having anything like a wine bar or something like that? No, it's all for takeaway at this point. Do you know if they applied for a tobacco license? It's just the beer. one. Class just the one. Two, class two. Class two. Sorry, definitely better. To sell to just wine and beer? To yeah. sell beer and wine for people to take away. Yep, mm -hmm. that was the only one she applied. In closed containers, I yeah. presume, yeah. yeah. And then call it off the price. Modify the liquor license to change it, right? If it was going to be open container or serve. They have to apply for a new it's license. A, it's yeah, a it's a totally different. Different. As Jamie knows, probably better yeah. than I do. <laughs> it's a totally different license. Yeah. And the tobacco would be a totally different That's license different. as well. Yeah, and right. you, that wouldn't necessarily even come to it would. That would yeah, to it town clerk. Yep. You yeah. approved it for Maple Corner back the, in the spring. Right. For instance, Maple Corner has five different licenses. They're all very specific. Yeah. Some are for on premise, some are for off premise yeah. and, and different beer, types beer of consumption. Tobacco. Yeah. Um, uh, would anybody like to move? Author is, up, um, let me see, we approve the license. We approve it and then the liquor control will issue it. So approval of the license for the East Callis General Store. A second class liquor license, right? I would make a motion to approve a second class liquor license for the East Callis General Store. Second. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. I have a question. Is that the real name of the business? Is that the real name of the store? The East Callis General Store? Mm -hmm. uh, I don't remember off the top of my head, but I can let you know tomorrow. Okay, thanks. Okay. I mean, that used to be the old name, and it was the right. general store of East Callis. Um, that was doing so, but, now with this yeah. new business. Yeah. I'll I, I'll it went, it I think it went back. John and Sharon called it the general it's store of East Callis. And then the next guy who bought it turned it back. I guess it was Leslie, went back to East Callis General Store. Okay. Okay. Uh, Reauthorization or re signing of the agreement, which is to be done annually between the town and the friends of the Callis Town Hall. You've all seen it. It re refers to. Um, management, who, who's responsible for what. And they've added a clause that authorizes us to allow quasi-municipal groups to use it, like the Friends of Callis, <laughs> not to be confused with the Friends of the Callis Town Hall. <laughs> the um, other example which came up in our meeting was the, uh, um, there was a, a meeting of uh, like an emergency meeting of uh, like emergency services from all over the um, the county after the flood, and so there's this question. It's not really callous. It's not a municipal activity, but it's a quasi municipal activity, and then it involves you know official bodies here. Well, so and CB fiber come out here, which affects callous, but also right, right. the larger community. You were thinking of insurance. Where is that? You were thinking of the insurance coverage. Uh, since it wouldn't, 
wouldn't be covered under the town's policy, but it probably would be covered under the friend's policy. These you mean if something happened while the CV fiber before meeting here? Yes. Okay. They tripped over their fiber and tripped themselves. Well, right. Would the, the town cover anybody who tripped over that cord? <laughs> it's a I would bill. think so. Right? We talked a lot about the insurance, uh, you know, um, a couple of years ago, and um, you know, the I guess uh, town legal services basically suggested to us each group should be fully covered with the notion that um, in the in those instances, what typically happens is there's an attempt to shuttle um, liability around. And if each one has a nice cushion, everyone is safer. Each group being so, friends so, of the Callas Town Hall and the town of Callas. Exactly. Okay. Right. Right. Yeah. And the uh, and the uh, whoever the temporary lessee is as well. And there's a wedding. We ask the people putting on the wedding to have their own insurance. And you're and the insurance companies hire lawyers and they argue about whose policy it's going to be. Yeah. As long as everybody has at least one insurer. Then, uh, yeah. <laughs> So you're concerned that that we wouldn't cover the friends of the Callis Town Hall or this emergent or CV fiber? It, it's not a question of, of, of friends of the Callis. I know it's it's, it's other, you're you're oh, I see. you're calling our attention to maybe before we sign this agreement we should think about that. Well, maybe, I assume we've talked to Passive. Yes. No, why would they talk to Passive? Passive. That would be us. The ones that said, um, cover yourselves. So I think you're suggesting that we give passive a call and ask if we add this clause, are we covered? No? Um, the friends of the past are be doing the coverage. For the quasi-municipal groups? Yeah. Right. Because they're, they're quasi-municipal. I know that this sounds insane, but it makes it kind of sense. And for the for the female uh -huh. people met here a while ago, um, if, if there'd been some claim, it, um, you wouldn't have wanted passive wouldn't have wanted to pay it. The friends have a, a kind of grand overall policy. And that I would see. Be the first place to look. So how does the, how do the friends afford insurance? What what income do they have? Uh, we have some grants. We've got some grants. We've got we've done fundraising. Um, and um, we're doing okay. And okay. We will in the future, um, a lot of it will come from uh, rental of the, of the space. Yeah. So that's exactly the reason we retain 80% of the proceeds of rental for the space. The town gets 20%. So that's exactly the kind of thing that that 80% is supposed to cover eventually. So, so it's a general liability policy that, that the friends of the Callis Town Hall would be holding for things like tripping over cords and whatnot? We've, we've had that policy for the last two years, I think, yeah. Okay. So who do people call when they want to reserve? Tegan. Who do they actually call? Or <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> they call me. They, they, they call everyone if it's, if it's municipal. I call Cliff. Yeah. I if it's municipal, we take care of it. If it's right. not, I direct them to Cliff or right. to the friend's email address to talk. Yeah. Okay. Are we comfortable signing this agreement now? As written? And then we would have to get, is Cliff back in town now? Because uh, yeah. it looks like he has to sign it. <laughs> so I guess what we can do is give it to you guys and if we sign it tonight and you can get your signatures. I have a quickie question. This is separate from, do we also not have an individual that we provide some sort of stipend for managing the building and is that separate from what? That, that's kind of an issue. Which I think. Well, I know that was a thing, but I didn't know if that thing was rolled up into this thing or that's a separate thing. I don't know what that says about. Like, I clean, but there is a person who's supposed to um, come in and. Like, what do we have the manual for the building? I'm working on it, but we don't have one yet. I mean, I just call John a call, who I live with, but. Um, <laughs> there needs to be a manual, it needs to be somebody who is, you know, following up on things. and... So, 
this I feel like this is a tangent, but we have the gospel hall award and we have Andy Police who gets a stipend <coughs> to help do handyman type stuff between here and the town office. So like okay. if we need a light bulb change, if we need folks cleaned off the siding, if you know something is doing something weird and it's a quick fix and paint needs touching up, we call him and it falls under his stipend job. Okay. Uh, if it's a bigger task, he'll invoice us. But there as she said there's no clear things so Barbara and I have been trying to get there, put together a list and a schedule and like all right every quarter this has to happen and every month this has to happen okay. and every so but so that's a process. separate entity from it's a separate thing right. to and, whatnot. Okay. and that and that and Andy would probably maybe report to the um, town administrator town administrator yeah and mm -hmm. the yeah. right now he reports to you all and kind of to me but i'm going to report to you about anything that happens so mm -hmm. um, but barbara and i are the ones who are like well that paint job's really looking you know we're the ones in the office that you are like, yes mm -hmm. yeah and there should be a manual before john mccullough dies because <laughs> yeah he's the, the one who knows the most about the building yeah. so he needs to write the manual then I'm gonna sit down with him. Yeah, well, somebody has to push him. <laughs> I was gonna sit down with him once we uh, get past this tax season yeah. where he's getting called all Excellent. the time, Excellent. and get a good history of the town office and the town hall from his perspective. Long-term projects, quirks, who to call if this happens. I was planning to talk to him. About and by the way, what's going on with the shutters? Was he? Were you gonna rent a? Oh, they had a day all planned. <laughs> and Andy has um, staging out there. Yeah, they have oh. two or three days all planned it right. Mm -hmm. uh. Weird. What? <laughs> <laughs> but they're both the kind of people you've got to push. Yeah. We ask them. That's right. Really they push pretty hard. <laughs> <laughs> it's not hard enough. Tell them to pick a sunny day. You don't have to push too hard. <laughs> okay. You have know, about a dozen of those a summer now. So, um. so if you want to see the addendum A, which is the very last page of the document that Cliff sent y'all, is the one that addresses this yep. issue if you want to just cast your eye over it and see. I mean, I think otherwise pretty much everything is boilerplate from the previous yeah. year. Yeah. So yeah, there was one cross out which made sense. Yeah. Right, about, which, the, about the date. Yeah, yeah. yeah that and was. the stuff about insurance is on page five. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Okay, would somebody like to move that we sign this? Oh, I don't know. Second. Second. Okay. Any further discussion? Can I ask one mm -hmm. question? I was just looking at the insurance section, and given the, mm. the change of the last addendum, the quasi municipal groups would those under the insurance it's to cover municipal and to cover non-municipal yeah. where does the quasi municipal fit in that <laughs> and does it matter that well it seems to be like non-municipal non we could probably make that a big difference of um, or add the quasi municipal to to the insurance. Right. The insurance on the top. Yeah. Right. I was just one, wondering if the top one should be to cover municipal and quasi municipal. It's a good catch, Jamie. How do you define quasi municipal? Well, they switched. <laughs> 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 uh, well, I was These are yeah, community yeah, groups. Yeah. It's here. It's in. It's, it's in. It's in here. Yeah. yeah. That's not fun. I uh, that's a good catch, Jamie. I think that should be added. I think it makes sense to add the role of the quasi municipal underneath the municipal. Right. So um because they're, they're doing things relative to the town's business right. and function. But then I think that, that would also have to be a list of things that are approved by the municipality, like groups, I guess. You would add the quasi judicial to municipal. Is that what you said? But then we're not sure. We need to check and see if our insurance right. will cover it. Then we do know that the friends' insurance will cover it. I so think probably, I think that second paragraph should probably say to cover non-municipal and the quasi-municipal. Yeah. Right. Yeah. The second paragraph. Yeah. Okay.
So that the friends would cover that. Yeah. Okay. Um, or in that case, I guess we can't sign this document because we'll have to fix that. Um, but we can still vote to authorize. We can vote to authorize us to sign it. We'll sign it at the next um, meeting. So we'll consider that a motion. All right. Okay. Yeah. We'll consider that a motion. Would somebody second that motion? Okay. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thanks. I'll ask, uh, well, maybe you could ask Barbara. <clears throat> somebody just needs to fix that, and we'll get it on the next agenda. So agreement. Yeah. So the original motion to approve that was made by Jordan, and then Jamie offered that. Oh, amendment. yeah. Jordan was will you please, so withdraw. Withdraw. <laughs> <laughs> you please withdraw? Yeah, okay, why don't you just say Jordan moved and do it the way Jamie said it, okay. and then Jamie seconded. Yes, just an amendment to my motion. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Which I accept. Yeah. <laughs> and this is actually one of those things that Barbara does not have to do. Cliff has the right. master document. Oh, okay, will you ask Cliff to do it and send it to Barbara, to, and we'll deal with it. We'll sign it at the next um, meeting. Thank you. Thank you all. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Um, doing pretty good here. Okay, so um, Tegan has very kindly offered to head up a small committee to review all our ordinances and policies, prioritize which ones need updating and or changing, and then actually work with the appropriate people to offer us language. She suggests that Sandra be on it and one of us. Any discussion on that? Questions? Yes. What, I mean, what's likely to be on there besides the personnel policy? Um, our Wi-Fi policy is out of date. Uh, Sandra suggested we have a cell phone policy because that's becoming a thing. Also, um, and How many? some of these just haven't been looked at and have yeah. various things. There's a conflict of interest policy and there needs to be some updates to that from what I gather. Yeah, um, there does. We have drug and alcohol policy and now marijuana is legal so we should probably take, we should make sure all the languages. So there's just a lot of little things that I don't think anything is a big dramatic change, but something that needs to be brought into it. How many cell phones does the town issue? Right now we just have the one, as far as I know. That Sandra has. That Sandra has. Okay. Um, but Ann Tulin has requested one for the road crew, and potentially the foreman. The one Sandra has now was the road foreman's, but then we didn't have a road foreman, so she is doing it in her remote work. Mm -hmm. I do have an IT policy, I guess, for We have an internet policy and a Wi-Fi policy. I don't think, from my memory, that we have a tech stuff policy. No. And we can certainly do that. Yeah. Uh, ordinances require a lot, a little more complicated process to get past them, but the policies do not. So. But somebody does need to write the language. But somebody needs to write the language, and you all need to approve it. Yeah. yeah. So, Great. everybody think that's a good idea? We need, if so, um, we're thinking of Tegan and Sandra, for now anyway, and one of us. I, I guess Tegan I can do that. Tegan and Sandra? Did you say Sandra? Yeah. Yes, because, so we'll have two from the office staff, because they really, Sandra really wants to work on the personnel policy. She has some thoughts about that. I don't want to push you into it. I'll take that one on if you don't want to. Um, sorry, but if you want to, you're welcome to. Once we get people hired, I mean, I would feel like I had more time. And we're also, we're, I, the plan is to call in other people who will be more knowledgeable about specific things. It won't just be the two or three of us sitting in a room, ideally. You know, when there are other specific things, it won't just be the two or three of us sitting in a room, ideally. You know, when there are road questions, we'll call in a road commissioner or even a road crew member as needed when it's 
I think something that. else we'll call another coach. Yeah. And Larry from I think I think that one. Uh, we will probably get sure. VLCT okay. on the phone at least a few times. So yeah. Really sound like it's going to be a big time. Okay. So Sorry, I can say this is for reviewing ordinances and uh, and yep. policy policies. Yep. Tegan's already got a list, right? Yeah. And and the next thing, and, and you've probably already prioritized a few of them anyway. I've started to. It's a lot to sort through. It's yeah. To read them all and see where we are and everything. The, the first thing I had to do is just make sure we were, I had the most up to date version in the binder, and now I'm sort of looking through them more carefully. Okay. I'd be happy to get involved in that. I'm just not going to be able to like do a deep dive probably until like after September. Um, yeah. And then theoretically, my time opens. When? I, and we'll let you know. I'm assuming when these meetings are happening, like all of you will know when they're happening if any of you want to attend for whatever mm -hmm. reason. Okay. Somebody like to make a motion to appoint a policy and ordinance review committee. For the purposes outlined here, which Rose can just take that off. And that the committee would consist of Tegan, Sandra. Gabrielle has also volunteered, but would you? Um, well, with Jordan's time frame, does that work? To wait until? After September. How pressing is your personnel policy? Yeah. Um, well, one of us could. I mean, I think that, that I mean, I'd, I'd have time to contribute to contribute to things for sure. But I'd, I'd say if we do a deep dive into a whole bunch of things all at once, I could probably. I can help you too. Yeah. Uh, you know, we'll we'll. I feel like we can all. No, I think it's a, a rush. Committee. Yeah. Yeah. It's just this, like the personnel policy, want, like she said, no one's looked at it in. Shall we do that? Twenty sixteen. Yeah. yeah. And it really needs some. Yeah. And now yeah. that we have a union contract, we should do we can, some yeah. cross. And I looked through and took notes on both of them, so I have notes to bring to that meeting when it happens. Okay, so the motion would be to appoint Tegan, Sandra, and Jordan to the committee. Ian, you? No. no. I'll, I'll come in and help. I mean, drafting is something I do relatively easily, so I can help with that part. So. All right. I guess it's mine right now. <laughs> Do I have a second? Second. Okay. Any further discussion? Jordan, are you thinking about something? Okay. All in favor? No, I'm just making a list of all of the other things. <laughs> 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 I was thinking about the, uh, the select board policy, too, I guess. Uh, there's oh, you mean the rules of the procedure rules. <laughs> that we yeah. never oh. did? <laughs> <laughs> so there is but I don't think that needs like a whole crazy overhaul. I mean, that, that, that can pretty easily be brought back to. Just yeah. like board along with the yeah. Okay. I put it on the next agenda. I'm I'm gonna <laughs> I'm gonna put it back on the radar screen. Both <laughs> the binder and if you go to the cap, the ordinances and policies page on the website have a few things like that that are not an ordinance or a policy like the select board. Yeah. I forget what the term is, but there's a couple other things um, in there. Okay, we've got a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Great. Thank you. And now we're down to reports. So we'll save um, the, the executive session ones for the end. So let's hear from Gabrielle. You got anything to report on the FEMA progress? Yeah, so last Thursday we had the recovery scoping meeting and there were about eight different FEMA personnel there. Um, Scott sent us all, I think, um, a link to a list of the participants from the meeting. So there were about eight FEMAs and um, including um, a gentleman from mitigation and he and Toby had a lot of um, dialogue about, you know, Q&A and, and, um, and it, it went really well. So Toby presented, um, oh, and then for Callis, there was Scott and Charlotte, Toby, Nick, Sandra, and I. Um, and uh, this was the first real meeting with FEMA that we had. Our, our person, our primary point of contact is Michelle Miller. And, um, and so, um, and I actually can't tell you other than the mitigation gentlemen what the, the rest of their specializations were other than Michelle, the primary. 
So, um, so a lot of the time was spent reviewing a slideshow of photos of the, primarily the road damage and also the dam that um, Toby had prepared. And, um, and we looked at the inventory as well a little bit and they complimented him to the highest extent and expressed a lot of gratitude for the work that he had done. Like they're really impressed with what we've been able to put together so far. They will, um, for anything that is 100% completed already, uh, Michelle will create a project for those ones once she gets all the paperwork, which um, Toby and Sandra have coordinated on or are coordinating on, and that will be um, the first thing to be reimbursed. And um, there was not talk of timelines <laughs> about when we would get reimbursed or anything like that. I think that's like a third rail thing to ask, although if I had thought of it, I would have asked it. But, um, but I think it all depends on when we, you know, complete the work, complete the paperwork, submit it, it and then there's the back and forth, et cetera. So, um, so Michelle also made several future dates to work with Scott. She's going to bring a scanner. They're going to do a big scanning party of all of the huh. work um, thus far. Toby showed off his little clear plastic case of file folders, which um, they, you know, that's that's what will be scanned. And, and he intends to send like essentially a template file to Michelle to make sure it's got everything that she wants. Sandra asked some questions about, you know, what kind of documentation they need, et cetera. Um, and, uh, and so I think the biggest kind of surprise, although it wasn't a surprise, but just the complication was how and really how to treat Curtis Pond Dam for, um, to put it bluntly, because um, the town did not own the dam at the time of, um, of the flood. And um, so we went back and forth a little bit because the first question she asked was who owns the dam? <laughs> the room stood still as one does when asked that question. <laughs> and so I tried my best to explain it. And, um, and then it sort of circled around to, well, who's legally liable? And if you are legally liable, um, then you can apply for the repairs to the dam. And so, um, so then at the end, and this is awesome because it was recorded and Scott sent it back to me because I didn't remember that had been this clear ask for clarity. And she said, if you um, provide document or if, if you can show that you're legally responsible for the dam, then you should feel free to apply for the dam. And you know, you may have to prove it at a later date. So, um, so that's, well, That's so what we've done is Nick has um, gathered the emergency management plan, which specifically states that we're going to uh, swing into action to help. This is our responsibility. And it outlines the steps we're going to follow. He's got a copy of that. We're putting it in the vault. <clears throat> so if we get audited, we have that. I've consulted with Mark Mahali about it and talked to him about whether I should call Thomas Maloney and what did Mark think. He thinks it's pretty clear. That, that we were, were taking. Responsible. He just doesn't think it's going to be much of an issue. And it'll only be an issue if they audit us and question the documentation. So I think we're probably okay. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> yeah. Um, how, is much, there a... how much money did we put into the Curtis Pond? 28,000. Yeah, because it's when we were standing in the parking yeah. lot, it was 17, yeah, 17 for the pump and, just shy of 11. and 11 for the riprap and a little bit of town labor yeah. as well. So, that will advocate, I guess. If it's $28,000, how big of a deal is it for us to just keep it out relative to all of the other things that we're going to try to get FEMA funds for? Like, is it, is, is, it worth, is it worth assuming that 
liability of trying to put the Curtis Pond Dam funds in there and, and take that I think, I think the point is we kind of already have, so we may as well document it. Okay. I mean, that... Uh, right. Right. I mean, the, the attorneys have sort of said all along, you're taking these steps that is showing liability. Yeah, I guess that's true. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we don't have any plausible deniability at this point. <laughs> <laughs> against ourselves, so. Sandra came back to the office and she said, "Worst comes to worst, you don't make that twenty-eight thousand dollars in the grand scheme of this one point seven million. Yeah. She was like, "It's it's small potatoes." Yeah, right. In this whole big picture. Yeah. yeah, well, I guess that's my point. I think I guess if something happens with the Curtis Pond Dam uh, reconstruction project and we don't move forward, and then that gets drawn out a couple more years, and then we've taken all of these steps, including, you know, trying to claim ownership of it to get FEMA dollars for the $28,000 and then something happens and somebody sues the town, et cetera, et cetera. That's just one more, I think, checkbox that a opposing lawyer would use against the town. And so, is it worth trying to chase the $28,000 to get it in there for, for just, you know, putting that one extra checkbox in, in the event that I'm, I'm a little change. uncomfortable having this discussion in public here. Um, um, that's probably something we should I know. discuss. <laughs> <laughs> well, we can take it up. We're going to go, well, hmm. I guess we have to do separate motions for everything we go into yeah. executive session for, don't we? I guess we can't do it when we do the other one. Um, we've, already, we've already taken plenty of actions on that. I can talk to you about it afterwards yeah. for a minute. So that's my update. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Curtis Pond Dam. Um, I have a couple of things. One is um, the public bid opening is September 26th at 3 p.m. at the town office. And that is supposed to be a warned select board meeting. So it, I think it'll be quick. We literally open them, look at them, and then DNK takes them back and makes recommendations. Um, but it'll be the first time we see what bids are coming in. Uh, we're optimistic that a bunch will, um, but we should make sure we can pull off a meeting at that time and have a quorum. So put that on your calendars. We is do have to. What day of the week is it's that? It's a Wednesday. It's a Wednesday. I won't be here. So I, I can probably. We have to have a quorum. We have to have at least three people there. Yeah. So would you guys put it on your calendars? Yeah, I think that I started looking at. Oh, it's a Tuesday. Oh, it's a Tuesday. Okay. September twenty sixth. Yeah, I I should be fine. Tuesday what time? Three p.m. At the town office. At the town office. Okay. Tuesday, September twenty sixth. And I'll work with Barbara to warn it. And if we. I don't know where you'll be, but if we needed to have you on the phone for calling. I guess, yeah. I'm, I'm going to be in Maine, but um, yeah. Would you guys still be quorum me if you have three of my kiddos and put me on Dartmouth all day? I think as long as we're a quorum, any of us can call yeah. a meeting okay. quarter. So we're not going to be taking any action. Right. So it's just going to open the meeting and make sure we're all there. Yeah. Receive everything. Yeah. yeah. So if you three can be there. Available, so, yeah, okay. That, okay. Great. Okay. Thank you. Um, oh, yeah. We have, I had the email open and I lost it. Um, at some point, so we signed a addendum to our contract with DNK a few weeks ago that got us through the bid phase. There is a second addendum for them to oversee uh, construction uh, or the construction phase and then they certify that it was built to spec. Um, we, I don't have that final document so we don't have to, they haven't actually sent me. Oh. Yeah, I okay. realized and I reminded him last week and then he got back to me today and said, there's no huge hurry but I'll isn't, have it to you. Isn't it essentially, week. they sent us the whole thing as one. Exactly. It's just what. It's just the other pieces. The, yeah. Yeah. But he hasn't separated it out. 
Um, and, and he's not going to change the cost? It'll be exactly what was in the other one? Yes. Okay. Um, so there are some members of the CPA um, who think that it would be better to wait until we have a contract with a contractor to sign this am amendment. Um, the, the CPA executive board sent a little statement, if I can read it, it's just two sentences, three sentences. Um, the CPA executive board recommends that signing the DNK contract for the construction oversight wait until after the contract with the construction contractor has been signed. It is our opinion more detail about the price quoted by DNK should be provided before signing. It has been our experience with DNK that client communication has been poor and DNK has been reactive and not proactive with our project. We would like to have some reassurances in writing that the construction oversight contract that improvements are being made. Um, and I can send that to you all. Basically, they just want a little more detail and there are some members of the CPA who have questioned if that project should go out to bid, but the general majority is thinks DNK should see the project through. Uh, but there might be a little bit of room for negotiating with DNK about the costs. Okay. I don't know how exactly that would work or who would. It sounds like do it. they want to negotiate. Right? Or, or they think we should negotiate. I think we would. <laughs> yeah, because it's a contract with us. Um, it's a time and material contract, so I'm not sure. You know, I feel like I can have a conversation with Michael um, and, and see if there's wiggle room anywhere, but I think it's... It's also on not to exceed, which is, was not clear in the verbiage, but it was, he said this is, the, this is a max. This is a max number, remember he said that? Yeah, so yeah. maybe, the, maybe the, the tack to take is to say, we want a very clear not to exceed in the contract. Okay. Um, but so I can work on that and I'll, I'll have the amendment next week. We probably won't have a contract with a contractor for another month anyway. Um, oh yeah, September 26th. Right. And then they take it and back then, and study it. Yeah. Right. Right. Um, so I'll, I'll find out from Michael okay. if he's okay waiting, if they don't mind waiting till after we have the contractor lined up okay. to sign this. So um, I won't put that on the next agenda then for signing, and you can just update us. Okay. Okay. Yep. If that's all right with everybody. Okay. Um, roads. Anything we haven't already beaten to death here? They just work so hard to get grading done, and three days later, it's a mud bog. It yeah. just, it's, there's finally material. We'll be happy to hear it. Yeah. So we're very bummed out too that the quarry didn't happen. Um, so there still needs to be the top layers on Moscow and a number of the other roads. Um, we couldn't grade without having that top coat. A lot of the roads because we needed additional material. So we're slogging along. So there's material, so... There's materials being crushed now, so... Okay. Roads like yours that are half <laughs> missing still, we have stuff to put in there. And mine. And yours. <laughs> so they're on Valentine right now, and, and I think it is a better strategy to kind of, they park the excavator, they club along, they're digging out the ditches, they're fixing the collars, you know, but it just, it feels like it takes forever, but it's going to be the best because it takes hours to move that excavator back and forth. So yeah. they're slowly moving, they're almost down Valentine. Uh -huh. they move up Baton a little bit, and then they should be heading over yeah, to the other side of town. 
and the backside of the pot chili. Thinking about a road chili. filling those what Toby calls scours, which I learned yeah. during the FEMA meeting. Those are some big ass scours. I know as the as the leaves start to fall, I'm seeing the scours sort of disappear. It's nerve wracking. Yeah. Okay, so they where did they find the the stuff they needed? So Bigford start, started crushing the plant mix. Oh, good. Um, and there is stuff from other places, but then they spend so much time driving. <clears throat> yeah. So, yeah. But this Bigford's is, is the closest, and no one has it. The smaller stuff that they need for the top coat was the thing that no one had, mm -hmm. that there was a complete. Yeah. Okay. Are, still utilizing, are we still utilizing, like, are there contractors that, uh, that are still on projects? Uh, Pretty specific, or can we put out some of the smaller? Toby will not let us. <laughs> so I asked him two weeks ago, and he said, "Nah, we got it covered." I'm like, "Oh, well, we got it covered." But so Toby felt at this point he did not need to bid anything else out because I was hoping for some like yours, like Bliss Road that have scours, or you know, just need. I mean, some are saying just grading, but I know once they get in there, they're going to need culvert work, and because that happens every time, and it's like, put that a top coat on and grade it. It'll be, it's like, what? Then they're going to be like, oh, this culvert's not working, or it's damaged, or whatever, but... I do still want to get a time frame, because, um, yeah, we invited people over for September 9th, and... I don't know. I'm starting to think maybe we should cancel it. And we can't get a, like a, a log splitter up there until um, a trailer can safely make it up there and I stuff know, like that. I know, but even getting material in and then coming back and making it mm. right. right and yeah, so. So all of this is still FEMA? There's roads that are still very... Yes. Drive up my road. No, <laughs> well, well, check it my out. My concern with saying that we that we shouldn't be putting things out to bid, and uh, is that now we're running into a situation where some of the roads that have been partially repaired or graded are needing mm -hmm. to get regraded um, because they're turning. I mean, I, I understand why the guys are feeling discouraged, yeah. but you know they've. They've gone through and regraded uh, Robinson Street, which I was super thrilled about personally. Uh, but but there's still roads that haven't had attention from from the initial washout, and we might yeah. get into a territory where there's some gray area uh, <laughs> when we come to keeping track of things. And I, I guess I'm questioning whether or not we should be yeah. trying to get contracts <coughs> so that the road crew can continue to ma maintain safe roads where we need them. Yeah, and they've been very good about separating the FEMA from the non-FEMA, but our primary goal this week was bus routes. So, right. bus routes, bus routes. And those are even Moscow Woods is um, open. They still have <coughs> the guardrails to put up and the top layer. But they know when the bus is coming through, so they'll make sure that it's accessible. They're everywhere. running the bus on Moscow Woods Road? They can get up, I guess. Yeah. Have you been on it? <coughs> so Moscow is technically really? drivable. Yeah. It does not have guardrails, and so I think we need to keep it closed because it's a liability. If we're like, go for it because we do have people driving up and down it, even though it says very clearly that it's closed. And during the day, they're still doing some culvert and ditching, so the road's going to be occupied, but they know when the buses are going to come through. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'll um, be darned. So that is good. And all the other ones, you know, so it's just slow moving, but now that we have material, so we can revisit, because I asked at the end of today, like, so what's the word? And they said, oh, Bickford's is grinding, crushing, whatever. Yeah. Making the stuff <laughs> that we need. So Great. try to get some um, info on that, yeah, because as we progress, I mean, so anxious about when we're coming up. Mm. Yeah. And getting the roads in shape for yeah. plowing. Yeah. All right. Thank you. I know under collective bargaining, we've got this um, addendum to the agreement. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> which yeah. the irony. The irony. <laughs> <laughs> um, you've, anybody want to make a motion on that? Um, I commit a motion to accept and sign the um, side agreement adding Labor Day to the recognized holidays in the recently approved Labor Day contract. Or, yeah, Labor Day. <laughs> Labor. Labor Day, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Do you understand that, Rose? You got that okay? No, I don't really know what you're talking about. Um, uh, let's see, did I write it here? Uh, if you look at the agenda, it says, due to a drafting error, um, okay. and you can see it there. The signed agreement needs a change, and um, they've done up a little one-pager. And um, Jordan has just moved to authorize signature. They want it signed by Larry Moquin, who's the union rep, and me, apparently. So uh, Jordan made a motion to authorize me, I guess, to sign this on behalf of the select board. All right, and we had a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. OK. So Did now this has to go to Larry Moquin for signature. Just well, if you have it at that shop, he's coming up, I believe, this week to bring the thingies to get their new dues pulled out. He said they're not doing the first. Okay. To me, not to. Was he coming to me or to you? I think it's going to be you. I thought, well, that's it. I, I was going to take the paper when you all done with it because oh, okay. I think he's coming to the town office. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. And it occurs the, to me we probably ought to have two copies signed. So they have one and we have one. That's, I didn't know if you wanted, they gave us three copies when they brought them the other day. Three copies. Uh, and they said they needed one back, or two back, I don't remember, it's on a stick. Yes, but we'll want one for our records, which they've signed. You didn't have to bring any others. No, I figured okay. you had them because. And I didn't, I didn't realize, I didn't think of it until just now. I just printed that out. For there's me. one copy that is fully signed of the contract. Yes. Because I went to Maple Corner <laughs> Store and signed it. Do you want me to it. run and fetch? The other. I mean, you'll no. be in the office. Next time I'm week. in the office, yeah. nab me and I'll sign it. Okay. okay. And you'll take care of making, sh yeah, getting that to Larry. Yep, okay. I'll let him all right. Thank you. Anything else from the, from the collective bargaining team? I think we're all so. set. Yeah. Okay. Um, all right. I don't know why it says process for hiring a road crew member, possible executive session. That let just scratch that because we're not going to do that. So we're down to the last item, which is the status of Shed v. Callis. Um. I don't think there's any reason to go into an executive session at the moment. Um, we are, the status has largely not changed. Um, we're trying to uh, engage in some dialogue, um, but we're just trying to see if we can even get there right now. So I, I spoke with the uh, attorney last week um, about the status of our our appeal, we have until, well, so right now we, uh, we try to have um, the civil suit dismissed. Um, th that was not fully accepted. Um, the court has requested some additional uh, validation, I guess, or, or argument from uh, from the shed party, um, and that the deadline for that is September 11th. Um, oh. So there's still some time before, and then there's going to have to be a response to that. Um, I mean, we can we can go into executive session if we want to kind of dis discuss other things. Um, so. Yeah, I don't I don't think we need to. No, I mean they probably need to be looking at potential placements for the three that are currently together, just a second fostering situation. Um, they were hoping that would be over by August, and it's really hard to know how long this is going to go on. So right. I am working on that. Okay. The other one's doing just fine. So, I mean, they're all doing fine, but just with winter coming again, it's a space mm -hmm. issue. Mm -hmm. Well. Okay, anything else? All right, thank you. In that case, I'll take a motion. No. 
super quick. The um, that emergency action plan and the, the two things that Nick had. Um, I guess I'll just circle back with uh, Nick and Scott and make sure that Scott actually emails it to Michelle Miller because she it came up in the parking lot after the meeting and um, I didn't I, know where to find it or anything. I guess but. I misunderstood. I thought the strategy was to file it and to just check yes we did accept li we we were li we are legally responsible and then put that in the vault in case we get audited and it has to be documented. Yeah, they actually, one of them asked to for see. the document that had oh. what, what are the properties impacted? Because they were sort of saying, well, do you have, do you have a maintenance schedule for the dam? Do you mm -hmm. have like, um, yeah. So I think, I don't know, I, I, I guess it just depends on whether they even remember they asked for it or not. Okay. Um, so I'll, let's see, so you're saying, we should hold on to it as a safeguard without calling attention to it. Well, it's just that you're storing all these documents in the vault for potential audit, and that just needs to be one of them. That's all I was saying. I'm not saying you can't share it with anybody. It's a public yeah, document. Yeah, I want to send it because they, yeah. they think, okay. if they remember, that they ask for it. Yeah. Okay. I do have a quick, if I might refer back to Rhodes. So are we going to... Are we waiting another two weeks before we start actively looking for a foreman? Yes, we don't have a final job description. Okay. I mean, uh, yeah, yeah. Okay. I guess we have to have it before we can put it out to bid. Is that a problem? It'll be fine. <laughs> mm, okay. Are you going to share the description with them? The description uh, of the foreman, none of them want. None of them want, they, they, they're all being very clear, none of them want to do it, because... Well, don't they want to know what the job description is, though, since they are I impacted can by it? share with them, the month in one would probably be... Yeah. Looks more like an actual working job then, because when I read ours, it did feel very office-heavy, um, which I know they really like to be out there doing stuff. So, mm -hmm. I can share that with them. Um, but it's probably good because Bruce will end at some point and, yeah. Winter's coming, so I just want to make sure we get all of you. Yeah, yeah. Okay, I'll take a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Something. <laughs> oh. I couldn't yeah. get... <sighs> it's the MOU, the agreement with the Army Corps of Engineers. Um, oh, yes, that was a very weird. Yeah. So, is that like because they're having the thing that we have to like make it larger? I don't like know, it, but Thomas yeah. recommended that last paragraph. Uh, um, and so, I've sent that to Jim, Colleen, and Jamie. Yeah. And I That's, guess the next thing is to, uh, Mark looked at it and said it was fine with him. Yeah. We all, there, it, I think it's not. I think it's just part of their permitting process. Yeah, so you guys are going to send that on to the Army Corps, right? Yeah. Yeah, so the ball's in your court now. Um, it, it needs a signature of Colleen from the CPA and myself from the town. Um, but don't we have to be sure they'll accept it, or do we just send it back in that form? Oh, good question. I think we can, I'll send it back to them, okay. and then we can do it at the next meeting. Okay. I think that's but it was a I don't think there's meeting. Meeting. Oh. Oh. Now we're adjourned. Thank you.